Welcome into Phil's Tax Hacks and Other Retirement Facts with CPA and Personal Financial Specialist, Phil Putney. Now let's get rolling with today's show. Hey everybody, back for another edition of Phil's Tax Hacks and Other Retirement Facts. Back for part two of our RMD conversation, Required Minimum Distributions. We're going to talk more this time about the inherited account side of things versus our own account, which is what we talked about on the prior podcast. So if you haven't checked that out, go check that out uh, as well. You don't have to watch one to watch the other, but it's not a bad idea because they nope. certainly, um, you know, the our own accounts is going to affect us all. The inherited account, you may not have one necessarily for somebody. Right. It, it may affect you at some point. Um, it may. It might it may affect not, right. your kids if, you right. know, you're leaving money to them. So make yeah. sure you understand the pros and cons, how it works. And Absolutely. Again, it's all back to planning. All back you to know, planning. Is, and we'd appreciate it if you watched them both anyway. So go watch. Yep. Yep. Absolutely. You doing all right, my friend? Doing good. Doing yeah, good. Yeah. Uh, a lot of good information last time, Phil, really. And, and so I'm just going to get right Thanks. into it because there's a lot, there's even more in this one. Yeah. Um, so RMDs are somewhat complex, but inherited little, RMDs get even deeper. So it's, yeah, it's kind of crazy. Yeah. yeah. So let's just jump right in. So RMDs on inherited, inherited accounts. Right. Um, so a couple little caveats with the rule changes. Uh, we're going to get into all that. So when mm -hmm. you think of it inherited, uh, this could go like the rules for spouse and the rules for children are different. Are, are different, right? Okay. So um, when you get into an inherited account, so again, an inherited account, this means that you've now inherited from a parent. I died. Have to be. Left might it to might my be wife. an aunt. Might be okay. an uncle. Right. Might be just a good friend. Doesn't have oh. to be a, a specific relationship. Okay. All right. Um, you know, it's just it's it's not your account. It's not your IRA, and okay. that's key because. Right at the get-go, one of the mistakes that unfortunately I've seen and custodians have allowed to happen, which I don't know how this happens, if you're not a surviving spouse, you cannot put that money, roll it into your IRA. If you do, you've blown up both accounts and that's a bad day because now you're paying tax on everything. Yeah, yeah. So so let's get into surviving spouse again because it depends on, on your relationship to the decedent. Okay. And what your options are. So if you are the surviving spouse, you have two options. Right. You, as a surviving spouse, technically can roll it into your own IRA. Okay. Um, it's the only time you can do that. The the reason or the advantage to doing that would be, you know, let's say your spouse passes early and in, in before required minimum distribution age. Sure. So if you roll the money now into your own IRA there is no required minimum distribution because it's yours and you can do conversions. You can do whatever you could do with your own IRA. Well, until account. you turn 72. Until you turn 72, right. but it's your own. But right? You're now treating it like our, the rules from the first conversation. Correct. Okay. So we're back to now it's your own. You're back your to own. the original set of it's rules. your own account. Correct. Okay. Um, but that can only apply to a surviving spouse. Okay. Um, right. The other option a surviving spouse has they, they can tr choose to treat it as an inherited IRA. So oh. they can they can decide to, to be in that next ca um, category of a non-spousal, what they call non-spousal designated beneficiary. Typically, the, the old rules, Phil, under prior to the SECURE mm -hmm. Act, was people would often take this, you would leave, I would leave my kid, uh, my IRA, there's a million dollars mm -hmm. in it, she'd have you know however many years she wanted to pull money out of it. That stuff we we've we've talked about it before. That was eliminated. Right. So we're going to dive into some of the the way the new rules break down and how you would do it. So if you would, if you got this prior to what 2020, yeah. So if if you inherited the account prior to January first, 2020, okay. You know, so same timeline as the RMD rule changes. Yep. You're under the old rules, and now you have what's called a stretch or have the opportunity. You, to, yeah. you, you hear the old you know the concept of a stretch IRA. Yeah. In the stretch IRA simply means that you as a beneficiary now can take required minimum distributions based on your own age using what's called the single life table. And, and just an interesting caveat with this, the if it's your own IRA, it's the uniform life expectancy table. Oh, If it's an inherited, it's the single life expectancy table and life expectancy is shorter for the single life table. Oh. Why? I mean, it basically, the IRS is trying to get the money quicker. Ah, ah. Out of a beneficiary IRA is what it comes down to. A little tax hack. There you go. Right. You know, so, I mean, if 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 you did inherit it prior to December or January 1st of 2020, mm -hmm. you can stretch it under the old rules. One caveat to, to keep in mind here is that if that's the case and you're following those old rules, mm -hmm. we 
mentioned in the last show, the IRS changed the RMD tables starting for RMDs in 2022 and beyond. Well, they changed not only the single life table or the uniform table, but the single life table too. So if, if that's the case, you have to go back and start using the updated table. And oh. with an inherited IRA, it works a little different. With your own IRA, you go back to the table each year. Yeah. And figure out what's the age. And figure out with what an, it is. Okay. With an inherited IRA, you only go to the table once, and that's the year you inherit it. Figure out your life expectancy. So let's say, you know, your 55 life expectancy is 22. Okay. And then this year it's 22. Next year it's 21. Next year it's 19. You, you just subtract one from it each year. So let's talk about the, the new rules. The new rules. So this is again non-spousal designated beneficiary. Designated just means that you're on the line, right? They they put your name down. Yeah. So for a simple thing, this, let's just our kid. Let's just say we're right. to do so you specifically named your your child as a beneficiary. So under the new rules, they have a ten year distribution. Um, and the way the way it was originally kind of described is all the money has to be out of the account by the end of the tenth year. Now, caveat here, is, <laughs> and I I fully expected this to come, and the IRS has actually now introduced. Um, some proposed regulations to say, well, that's really not what we meant. Hmm. We meant you had to take an RMD every year. Every year. Stay tuned. We're still, this is still kind of in the works. The it IRS could maybe become a stretch hasn't, again, sort of. Hasn't yeah. officially yeah. Um, announced what they're going to do. But the way it was originally interpreted is, hey, I don't care when you take it. It's just the yeah. 10th anniversary of, of inheriting it. All the money has to be gone. So should, how should we play that for right now? Should we play with the the actual written thing, which is let's, we assume we have 10 years to get this money out? I, I personally, I'm going to still lean to that and see what they yeah. do because they are they know this is a problem. Yeah. And it's really their error because they weren't clear. Yeah. You yeah. know, so generally when that happens, they're going to um, give you some provisions on how to get it caught up and corrected. So, I mean, if it comes through and this is the regulations, there's going to be provisions in there that says, if you missed it, this is what you need to do. Okay. Well, you know, for the so sake you're going to have argument, to catch up and make up the distributions. But. Yeah. So for the sake of the argument in the podcast, we'll just say for right now, the rule state, you got to get the money out within 10 years. But at the end of the 10th year. And there right. are exceptions if you've left this to your child, for example. So what are some of those? Right. So if you've left it to your child um, or anyone again, anyone again, yeah, that falls into one of these categories, then they're actually back to the old rules of being able to stretch it. Okay. So if, if the beneficiary is disabled, um, okay. if they're chronically ill, if they're not more than 10 years younger than you. And I think that the, the thought process is there. Well, it's really not that much of a difference. And true. You know, yeah. So um, if they're not, not more than 10 years younger okay. or if, or if they're a minor child, so a minor 18, child, meaning yeah. somebody not 18 inherits it. Um, they can stretch it. So go to the single life table, figure life expectancy, take small distributions. The, the caveat with a minor child is once they turn 18, now they go from the stretch to the 10 year rule. Back to the new. Okay. So right. at 18, now they've got 10 years. Again, the way it's technically written, 10 years to take the money out. But again, stay tuned, probably going to have to take a, an make RMD a change. Year. Yeah. Right. Uh, so Phil, I only have the one child, so that makes mm -hmm. it kind of easy for us. Right. But what if you have two? Can you name both? Yeah. So, and this is again where it gets a little tricky. So, <laughs> if you Makes have IRAs, right? Oh, yeah. There's nothing simple with the IRS. If you have an IRA, let's make it really easy. One IRA. You've got two kids. You've you've named both of them. They're both yeah. designated beneficiaries. If they have not separated that into two separate inherited IRAs by um, September 30th of the year after. The, the yeah, person passed pass. away, yeah. right? So you passed away this year. Yeah. You've named both kids on it. If they've not separated it into their own inherited IRAs by next September 30th, now they have to use the life expectancy of the oldest of the two of them. Okay. So they're both, they don't technically have to split it. They could leave it in an inherited IRA or even if they do split it after September 30th, they can no longer use um, their own if they're stretching it. They have to use the, the life expectancy of the oldest. 
Wow. Now again, if if this is happening, you inherited it this year, you're kind of back to that whole 10 years. So it doesn't make a lot of difference anyway. Yeah. Yeah. But, but again, you can see where there's just a lot of little sticky pieces. Uh, so working right. with an advisor or professional is going to help you kind of, you know, chop this up because I mean, some of us are probably, you know, so folks might be checking this out and they're thinking, wow, I'm getting confused already. Just, right? yeah, I know. It's a lot of, it's a lot. So it's detailed like, okay. information. So definitely. So it's worth it to say, okay, look, I've, I've got a, an IRA. I, you know, maybe I'm uh, going to be, I know I'm going to pass away, you know, sooner than I can use this money or whatever. Mm -hmm. I'm going to leave it to my two kids. It's definitely worth it to get some planning done and, and get some strategizing in there so that they now know who to turn to or talk to, to work through some of these things. So I'm um, checking my notes here. So we did the beneficiaries. Uh, so, so a non-designated beneficiary is maybe the first one is, oops, I didn't fill it out. I forgot to put a beneficiary on it. Oh, so now under the generally what they call the, the intestate laws of your state, every state has them, meaning yeah. I didn't give any direction. The state's going to give direction, mm. which typically means that IRA goes to your estate. And then your estate is going to be divided up amongst however, you know, those intestate laws are. Usually it's kind of following bloodline. But if that's the case, you didn't name a beneficiary, it goes to your estate. That's a non-designated beneficiary. Um, gotcha. If you name, if you name a trust. I was going to just ask you that. So you could, that, that's could you a non-designated beneficiary. Okay. Okay. Trust doesn't have a life expectancy. Right. Uh, um, a charity, your dog. I mean, anyone that doesn't have, have a life expectancy <laughs> doesn't have a birth date. You know, I, right. Yeah, I guess the dog, but technically it's not a, a living human being, right? Yeah, I know. So, I was being sarcastic. I'm sorry about that, folks. Yep. So you could so you could list your trust. Yes, you, you can. There's just a caveat to to understand. If you do that now, if it's inherited by um, an individual, they have potentially the 10 year. Right. You know, if it was after January 1st of 2020, if you named the trust, then we get into a whole nother set of rules. So if let's say you've named a trust, mm -hmm. you were already at 72 or mm -hmm. beyond. So mm -hmm. you were taking RMDs already. Now you, you go to the table, in the single life table, using the age of the decedent as the beginning age. Mm -hmm and kind of do that stretch concept. Gotcha. Okay. So it, it, it potentially can give you a stretch almost if the decedent passes after RMDs. And it, uh, and it gets, it gets, gets sticky here. So again, right. so now if we, if we die, um, there's a, there's a five-year rule. If we, if the decedent dies before uh, the required minimum distribution starts. Correct. So again, non-designated beneficiary, kind of the right. trust concept, Right. 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 You as a decedent have passed away prior to that date, prior okay. to 72. Right. Now there's a five-year rule. Um, and, and this one, the five-year rule has always been there. So these rules, they really haven't changed. So in the five-year rule being what? That, that the the, the five-year rule is that by the, the um, December 31st of the fifth anniversary of the, the person passing away, right. the account has to be fully liquidated. Okay. And that's, that's always been there. That's always been there. So the, okay. the non-designated beneficiary rules and, and concept hasn't changed. Okay. And this is, this is kind of where the interpretation of the new 10 year rule came into play because oh the five year rule was by December 31st sure. of the fifth yeah. year, this, everything had to come out in the way the 10 year rule was written. It, sound, it sounded very similar. So exactly that's why everyone yeah, was okay. following that concept. All right. So yeah, that's in this, this I just had a client scenario where we were going through this very discussion where somebody was thinking, Oh, you inherited it. It's automatically 10 years. It's like, well, right. no, you got to walk through who inherited it. What were you? Were you a spouse, a non-spouse yeah. designation, non-designated meaning a trust or, you know, some entity. Yeah. yeah you know, then figure out, okay, where was the decedent? What age were they? And, you know, and English class path. comes, English class comes back into play here. Yes. Uh, who, what, where, when, why plays a, <laughs> yep, plays a yep. big You've got to follow, kind of follow the, yeah. the, the steps through to figure out where you're at. There's definitely the difference between whether you're the spouse inheriting it. There's some rule differences, whether you're yep. the children inheriting it. And then there's this non-designated, like the trust concept. So we talked on the other one about if you had multiple accounts, like what the right. rules were for just your own thing when it comes to taking RMDs. What about if you've left this now to, um, you know, your, your kids again, for mm -hmm. the sake of the argument, and there's multiple accounts, does it work similar? Yeah. So 
Um, just like if it's your own with IRAs, you can aggregate. The, the extra twist here, though, is you can aggregate by decedent. So you can't have just one inherited IRA account. And if you got money from your mom and your dad and your aunt, put it all in there. Oh, okay. So if, maybe if by you, person. Yeah. So if you inherited two IRAs from your dad and one from your mom, now you have two separate inherited IRAs. You have to satisfy two RMDs then. And they're two separate RMDs calculated yeah. on each account together, right? Yeah. So I mean, or each separately, I mean. So the two you got from your dad, you can technically roll those into one inherited IRA. Right. And the way an inherited IRA is labeled is it's um, the individual's name, um, beneficiary of, and it mis mentions the decedent's name, mm -hmm. IRA. You know, so I mean, it's very specific titling, and that's why it's separate. And the other reason it's separate is again back to where do you fall in these, and what rule do you apply, and so. Okay, so the IRA is still kind of aggregates. Four hundred three B. Four hundred three B is very similar aggregate okay. by decedent. Um, qualified plans. Um, again, each plan is going to stand on its own, so very similar. Qualified plan rules supersede the IRS. They can't give you more privilege than what the IRS rules do. So the, the, gotcha. the 401k okay. plan can't say, oh, you can take it out over 20 years. Well, no, the IRS says 10. Right. But the 401k plan can say, if you inherit it, you got a year. It has to be out by December 31st. Mm, okay. I and see it, can't right. be, it can't be rolled over. I mean, the, the so a 401k or a 403b plan, you've got to be very, very careful leaving money there and letting it be inherited because yeah. you potentially could be getting your beneficiary tied into a scenario that doesn't allow them to take full advantage of some of the opportunity maybe hmm. that the IRS is allowing. You know, so, Phil, it sounds like yet another kind of- It's you know, yeah, another, uh, another reason, reason to, to get away from the 401k yeah, because to roll now you, you eliminate that whole set of rules. You don't yeah. have to worry about it because they don't exist. Custodians- from, from the company, basically, that's providing the 401k. Yeah. Correct. Because And this has always been odd to me. I don't understand why this is the case, but it's a lot of things like that in the IRS code. Right. <clears throat> IRA custodians can't do that. So IRA custodians can't make their own rules right. as far as distributions. It has to follow what the IRS says. 401k, 403b company plans can make their own set of rules that kind of supersede, can be more uh, constrictive than what the yeah. IRS rules are. So, okay. Yeah. Really, again, another good tip, especially when you think about planning yep. and legacy planning, right? Yeah. Because then it's like, okay, look, you know, whether you know, if you know you're sick or you don't know you're sick, you're just aging, right? It's like, hey, let's just, let's just go ahead and get some planning done to get this stuff out of the way. So there's just less uh, mess to deal with in the events yes. that I do pass away. Yep. Uh, it just seems like that just seems like a smart move to me to, to move through some of those steps. It gives you a lot more flexibility. Yeah. Yeah, for sure. So, Yep. Um, okay. What about uh, with a Roth? Uh, anything so, to talk about yeah, here? So Roth IRA. So we talked about in, in your own account, if it's a Roth IRA, you don't have RMDs. Right. If it's a Roth 401k, 403b, you do. So one right. of the reasons to roll it into the IRA. Yep. Now, if it if it's inherited, okay. whether it's a 401k or IRA doesn't really matter, a Roth account, a beneficiary has to take RMDs. Oh, so it's the same exact concept that we talked about with all the rules above. So you have to go back to say, oh, are you a spouse? Are you a non-spouse designated? Are you a non-designated beneficiary? Follow all those same rules, even on a Roth. Huh. So an RMD, a Roth, a Roth IRA, RMD rules apply to those you left it to. Yes. Even though it didn't apply to us if we were alive as right. the owner. So you as an owner moving money into a Roth gives you the advantage of I don't have to take the RMD. I can leave it there until right. I want it. Right. Now that you've passed and it's gone to a beneficiary, they though have to take it out. The IRS isn't going to let us sit in a tax-free account growing tax-free forever. They uh, want that money back okay. into the pool, so to speak. So, so, but you're not paying taxes so, on that. You just have to pull it out, correct? Right. So the, the beneficiary doesn't have to pay tax on it, provided that the owner met the five-year qualification. Uh, again, a lot of information here, folks. We're hitting. Yes. So we're, so we're it, it, yeah. If you're inheriting a Roth, just realize you have to take the money out you know that's but that's you know what? kind of back to the original concept and that's generally great, it's going to be tax-free 
Yeah, but that's a great point though, because I mean, I, I know I, I talk about this stuff every day, and I didn't know that, right? Okay. So it's it's easy for these things to slip through the cracks a little bit. You say, well, hey, the whole point of a Roth is you pay the taxes going in, and you yep. don't have to do RMDs. That's a selling point that people often yep. talk about. Uh, yep. What the heck is he talking about? Again, this is only if you've left it to your heirs. To the heirs, I think, right? The, and, yep. and it's they don't have to pay taxes as long as it meets that qualification, that caveat that Phil just right. mentioned. But you just have they want to get it out. They don't want it to grow tax free. That's the point so right you know it, it was funny when we first started the conversation you were like they're not too complicated but i guarantee you people watch they're like he's nuts they're complicated but you do this every day so there's a difference right. yeah bottom line is have a plan right yeah you know have a plan for your own rmds understand what's going to happen to your accounts when you pass yeah and if you yeah. want to have some control and help manage that you have the opportunity today. You're following a plan, whether you set one up or not. It's either your plan, something you developed right. and figured it out working on your own or with an advisor, yeah. or you have what I call the default plan, the government plan, right? They've yeah. got a plan for you. Yeah. And this is it. Here it is. If you don't do your own strategizing to, to kind of work these rules into your scenario, you're stuck. This is what it is. So we, we try not to get too super technical. As you can tell, it's easy for Phil. Yeah, this one is a little bit easier to, yeah, or harder can, to, to not get technical because yeah. unfortunately it's technical. It's just yeah, what he, it is. He can start walking into that technical stuff pretty good. Hopefully we kind of kept it enough to where you, you know, kind of resonated. Great thing about podcasts is you can kind of go back if you're like, I think I got that, but I'm not 100%. You can always just kind of rewind and play that yep. part over again. Uh, and, and of course, at the end of the day, if you just, you really need help with it, just reach out to a professional. If it's not Phil, definitely talk to somebody, you know, in your area. Phil helps people all over the country as well. Obviously, he's in the, the major Detroit area, the metro Detroit area. But either way, you can reach out to him if you need some help. But definitely talk to somebody around these things because there's a lot to it. And this part being really the legacy planning piece yes. of what we're doing for retirement. So reach out to Phil if you got questions. Phil's Tax Hacks. Um, dot com. That's Phil's tax hacks.com. That's the website for the podcast. Subscribe to us on Apple, Google, Spotify, YouTube. Uh, you can also just reach out to him and call him. It redirects to his main site, uh, or you can just call him at 248 It's 248-888-7530. Phil, thanks for hanging out and getting in the weeds, man. Thanks, we don't often get in the weeds, but this one yeah, was kind of, one that kind of kind of called for it. Yeah. A little, little more technical than normal, but that's, yeah. that is what it is. That's the topic. It's uh, it's the IRS and it's uh, you know, <laughs> that's right. They don't make things easy. So no, no, not at all. I appreciate it as always, my friend. We'll see you next time here on Phil's Tax Hacks and other Hello. retirement facts. Investment advisory services offered through AFS Wealth Management. The content of this program is provided for informational purposes only and is not a solicitation or recommendation of any investment strategy. Investments and or investment strategies involve risk, including the possible loss of principal. There is no assurance that any investment strategy will achieve its objectives.